In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, a continuation of the reading from the mystical city of God by Venerable Mary of Agreda. Jesus meets his mother on the way to Calvary. 656. The executioners, bare of all human compassion and kindness, dragged our Savior Jesus along with incredible cruelty and insults. Some of them jerked him forward by the ropes in order to accelerate his passage, while others pulled from behind in order to retard it. On account of this jerking and the weight of the cross, they caused him to sway to and fro and often to fall to the ground. By the hard knocks he thus received on the rough stones, great wounds were opened, especially on the two knees, and they were widened at each repeated fall. The heavy cross also afflicted a wound on the shoulder on which it was carried. The unsteadiness caused the cross sometimes to knock against his sacred head, and sometimes the head against the cross. Thus the thorns of his crown penetrated deeper and wounded the parts which they had not yet reached. To these torments of the body the ministers of evil added many insulting words, ejecting their impure spittle and throwing the dirt of the pavement into his face so mercilessly that they blinded the eyes that looked upon them with such divine mercy. Thus they of their own account condemned themselves to the loss of the graces with which his very looks were fraught. By the haste with which they dragged him along in their eagerness to see him die, they did not allow him to catch his breath, for his most innocent body, having been in so few hours overwhelmed with such a storm of torments, was so weakened and bruised that to all appearances he was ready to yield up life under his pains and sorrows. 657. From the house of Pilate the sorrowful and stricken mother followed with the multitudes on the way of her divine son, accompanied by St. John and the pious women. As the surging crowds hindered her from getting very near to the Lord, she asked the Eternal Father to be permitted to stand at the foot of the cross of her blessed Son and see Him die with her own eyes. With the divine consent, she ordered her holy angels to manage things in such a way as to make it possible for her to execute her wishes. The holy angels obeyed her with great reverence, and they speedily led the queen through some by-street in order that she might meet her son. Thus it came that both of them met face to face in sweetest recognition of each other and in mutual renewal of each other's interior sorrows. Yet they did not speak to one another, nor would the fierce cruelty of the executioners have permitted such an intercourse. But the most prudent mother adored her divine Son and true God, laden with the cross, and interiorly besought him, that since she could not relieve him of the weight of the cross, and since she was not permitted to command her holy angels to lighten it, he would inspire these ministers of cruelty to procure someone for his assistance. This prayer was heard by the Lord Christ, and so it happened that Simon of Cyrene was afterwards impressed to carry the cross with the Lord. Matthew twenty-seven thirty-two. The Pharisees and the executioners were moved to this measure, some of them out of natural compassion, others for fear lest Christ, the author of life, should lose his life by exhaustion before it could be taken from him on the cross. Beyond all human thought and estimation was the sorrow of the most sincere dove and virgin mother while she thus witnessed with her own eyes her son carrying the cross to Mount Calvary, for she alone could fittingly know and love him according to his true worth. It would have been impossible for her to live through this ordeal if the divine power had not strengthened her and preserved her life. With bitterest sorrow she addressed the Lord and spoke to him in her heart, My son and eternal God, light of my eyes and life of my soul, Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of my not being able to relieve thee of the burden of the cross, and carry it myself, who am a daughter of Adam. For it is I who should die upon it in love of thee, as thou now wishest to die in most ardent love of the human race. 
almost loving mediator between guilt and justice. How dost thou cherish mercy in the midst of so great injuries and such heinous offenses? O charity without measure or bounds, which permits such torments and affronts in order to afford it a wider scope for its ardor and efficacy. O infinite and sweetest love, would that the hearts and the wills of men were all mine, so that they could give no such thankless return for all that thou endurest. O who will speak to the hearts of the mortals to teach them what they owe to thee, since thou hast paid so dearly for their salvation from ruin? Other most prudent and exalted sentiments besides these were conceived by the great lady, so that I cannot express them by words of mine.